Hi there, Mr. Wiener. How you doing tonight, buddy? Were you up for the solar eclipse? Did it getting dark wake you up early today? Hey, did you guys uh, see the solar eclipse today? Happy Oons Day, guys. You know, by me in uh, the state of Wisconsin, we had about 90% uh, of the sun covered. So I was able to uh, uh, run away from work and meet my wife by her job site. And we put on our special glasses and we looked up at it for a good hour. And it was really interesting. Uh, when I first looked at it, it was quite a crescent of the sun directly above the moon. And as it progressed, it kind of went around to the left side of it, the moon. Um, very, very cool. I'm hoping where you guys were, you got a, a better view than me. Some of you in the country didn't get any at all. So, Mr. Wiener, we're going to play the envelope game tonight. <laughs> and he smells it in here. Here's your envelopes, guys, with your treats you chose inside. And he's itching to get at it, and I'm trying to keep him at bay because he is not happy with there just being nothing but dog food out here. He smells those cookies. He smells bread with butter. He smells grapes. He smells hot dogs. He's, he smells all this interesting stuff you chose to put in these letters here. So pretty soon, I just want to wait for some more to show up. I'm going to put it on the spinning wheel so it's nice and evenly dis distributed. And uh, whoever grabs what, grabs what? The first three that are chosen. Your personal stories, your animal stories will be read on camera. And for the ones that are picked by the correct raccoon, you guys are automatically entered into the viewer recipe challenge. You are really being pesky at the door front, Mr. Wiener. I know you want this game to get going. Should we get it started? We got a lot of raccoons here. I'm not seeing a lot of the ones whose names are on the envelope, and I can't do much about that. So, we might have to get things going here. Circus, you got the wheel spinning? Okay, it's real, real random here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. It says, Mr. Wiener, who sent it? Who sent it? Jojo sent it. Jojo, you might get a big win right here. Jojo, oh my goodness. Address to Mr. Wiener. That's the first one that's been opened. Jojo, you're a winner. You're automatically going into the viewer recipe challenge. So you got to pick up a recipe for us. And I'm going to read your story because you're within the first three picked. Mr. Wiener, way to go. Okay, I knew he was going to kick this game off. He knew something was afoot, and he's just been itching. Oh, look who showed up, Tiny Tim, and I see something addressed to Tiny Tim right there. He's sniffing it. Tiny Tim, you got to open it up. Look, Debbie McGuckin sent you a letter, Timmy. There might be a couple Timmies in there, actually. Yeah, there's another Tiny Tim right there, one from Indy Phyllis. We got one for Elton John. We got one for Gertie Monster, little Napoleon. Okay. Uh-oh, Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim, Mr. Wiener's opening up open up your envelope. That's not fair. Oh, Mr. Wiener, that's not addressed to you. Tiny Tim, did you see that? You better find your own. Opened it up, but didn't take nothing out. Went right back to JoJo's. I don't know, does that count? Look at Tiny Tim, he's looking for his letter. He smells Elton John's letter. Tiny Tim's thinking about taking out in John's letter. What you gonna do? As you see, I punched some holes in the bottom of these <laughs> so that they can smell it. Now, Tiny Tim, he's got some injuries, so it might be tough for him to open this up. But uh, he's a tough raccoon. He could figure it out. Be persistent, raccoon. Uh-oh, he gave up Kathy. He gave up on that envelope right there. Hasn't been opened up. Doesn't count. So, so far... Two of them have been opened up. Hindi Phyllis's has been opened up and JoJo's has been opened up. <laughs> so Phyllis didn't have a story, so we're gonna wait for a couple more. Uh-oh, someone's going after little Napoleons. So, okay. Tech the Hedgehog. <laughs> Mr. Wiener opened up the letter you had for little Napoleon. So, uh, we're gonna read your story. Uh-oh. Something came and spooked these guys. Oh, no. Tiny Tim, are you back to play the game? What did you find there? Oh, cutie. 
cutie as being something. I haven't seen her like this before. So, okay, there was a dog that barked. A lot of them took off. They came right back. Tiny Tim's the first one back to the wheel. Oh my goodness, we've had some good action here already. Mr. Wiener was the first to open up one address to him, so it's a double win for JoJo. JoJo gets uh, the story read out loud and also is entered into the recipe challenge. Um, Phyllis's was opened up, but she didn't have a story. But it wasn't the correct raccoon that opened it up. So she doesn't have a win there, but she got it opened up. These are all going to get opened up. It's just a matter of time. And uh, Tech Techno the Hedgehog. Sorry, little Napoleon didn't open it up. But uh, <laughs> we are going to read your story. So we're going to wait for all this action to wrap up with the envelopes before I uh, share these stories with everyone. Well, hi there, Klaus. I don't think anyone sent you a letter. Oh, you're going to grab Phyllis's. So Phyllis had a, a funny, funny item in that uh, envelope over there. Uh, bread with butter on it. <laughs> and Klaus is eating <laughs> your bread with butter that you had addressed for Tiny Tim. Timmy wasn't interested. I'm sorry, Phyllis. And Timmy needs to come back. I see some letters here for him. And I know there's items in there he will like, too. Timmy. Timmy, come on up here. Look it, look it. Your name right there. Right there, Timmy. Look it. It's got your favorite stuff in there. Okay, Martina. Your favorite raccoon, Klaus, just grabbed the one you had addressed to Gertie Monster, but didn't open it up. Okay, he's sniffing. Klaus is checking things out. So Martina chose a whole hot dog in an envelope. <laughs> Klaus, how was your sliced bread with uh, butter? Well, look who's here. Little Napoleon's here. Hi, buddy. Look up here. Yeah. You gonna smell me? Oh, no, you don't. You gotta be good. You gotta be good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He came with his uh, usual attitude. Come on up here. Look for your letter. Look for your letter. That's for Elton John. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That said little Napoleon on it right there. Yes, it did. Whose is that? Whose is that? It's Winter Productions. It's Winter Productions. You got yourself a big win right there. Little Napoleon took your envelope. That is awesome. And uh, they chose cookies for Little Napoleon, and that's a correct choice. So, another big W, which means you are entered into the food recipe challenge. You're going to have to think of a recipe to compete against all the others. And I believe you are the third one, so you get your story told. So I think all the stories have been taken up. We're going to hear uh, from Jojo. We're going to hear from uh, Techno the Hedgehog, and we're going to hear from Winter's Productions. They all have cool stories. Let's see, is there any left for Tiny Tim up here? Yes, there is. Tiny Tim, there's a letter up there for you. Uh-oh. I want an open little Napoleon's mail. He's going to get ticked off at you, Tiny Tim. Why don't you come open your own mail? Uh-oh, the monster's back. Oh my goodness. He found another one addressed to him. Nope, skipped it. He's going to Elton John's. <laughs> he took Elton John's letter. And uh, that was Kathy's. Kathy, the wrong raccoon ran off with your mail and is putting it in the water right now. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see that, Klaus? Where is your brother, Elton? I was hoping Elton would be here to play. You're being so silly and curious today. You really are. What do you want? So, sorry Kathy, you're not gonna be entered in automatically to the viewer recipe challenge, but when that time comes, you can always submit your recipes. <laughs> Napoleon's going back to his letter there. 
Uh-oh. Are you going to clean up this whole thing? Are you going to get Tiny Tim's? So Debbie, little Napoleon, just opened up Tiny Tim's letter. But he didn't eat from it. I got your butt. So that one down there, that sopping wet, does say Little Napoleon on it from uh, Techno the Hedgehog with marshmallows inside. And oddly enough, Little Napoleon does not want marshmallows. Tiny Tim, there is still a letter here for you. Is this cheating? Is this cheating? What are you doing? You gotta get it. It's under here, I know. It's right there. Look what Debbie got you. Open up your letter from Debbie. You gotta rip it up, big guy. Oh no, the monster came and says, no you don't. He's stealing Tiny Tim's mail. How dare you. Uh-oh. Umbra Borealis. You're getting action there. Little Napoleon just ripped it open and said, I don't want it. So he's not in the mood for peanuts. I think he just wants the cookies. So I don't think there's any cookies left in these envelopes. So I don't know if uh, Martinez or uh, Afflamingos is going to get any action here. Afflamingos said put grapes in there and Martinez said put a whole hot dog in there. Two things I don't use too often uh, with these guys. I, if anything, I'd use grapes way more than, uh, than hot dogs. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Martina. I think <laughs> Napoleon's going to get your hot dog. No, he just likes ripping envelopes open. <laughs> what a monster. What do you want, monster? What do you want, little Napoleon? Oh, you're just going to bite my knee? Until I give you what you want? Look at you, bag. Look at you tapping me on the knee. Tiny Tim, what's up with this guy? Who does he think he is? He, he's begging, but yet he's growling at the same time. That's not the best technique to get your way. Oh, what did I miss here? Oh, Debbie. Debbie, look at this. Tiny Tim is eating out of his envelope. That's another big win. That's a win for Debbie McGuckin. Boy, Debbie, you're racking up the wins this year. You uh, got the win with Mating uh, Ebony, too. So, you're automatically uh, entered into the, the food competition. You're going to have to come up with a recipe for these guys. They're all going to compete. Finally, Tiny Tim. Took you long enough to open your mail. I do that too. Sometimes I take my mail and I throw it on the table and it'll be uh, three, four days till I even want to open it up and see, especially if it's a bill. Okay, it is story time. And first up is uh, JoJo 10294. JoJo, thanks for playing along and I really like this story. So here's how it goes. About five months ago, while at a stoplight, I heard a cat crying like it was terrified. I looked around and noticed a taped up box on the curb. When I cut it open, I was horrified. It was a horrified Norwegian forest cat. Immediately I drove to the vet, and sure enough, someone threw her away because she was pregnant. I named her Samantha, Sammy for short. 62 days later, I helped her deliver five gorgeous kittens. Sammy and I have such a strong bond now. Love her and her baby so much. That's my best animal story. And Jojo, that's a very good one, and you have a big heart. And uh, you're going to get endless payback, good karma from uh, those cats and those kittens because they deliver nothing but love for years. I know I had a cat for 20 years. Next story is from Techno the Hedgehog 203. My animal encounter story would be for my beautiful cat, Princess. My dad and I found her when she was a kitten, and she used to come to us when we called her name. But eventually, she became a true queen, or Princess LOL, of my house. And she's been a delight all my family's life, no matter what I shall. Always have her in my heart, as well as these adorable and grumpus raccoons. So, there's a little bit of a sad twist to the story. It was not but moments after posting this that uh, his cat, which had been ill for some time, uh, finally passed away. And so I hope uh, 
I hope you're doing okay, Techno. I know even a couple weeks ago you were talking about your family may have to make a hard decision on what to do with the cat. And it's a beautiful story you shared, and I'm so glad that uh, your cat was in your life all that time, and you have all those wonderful memories to fall back on. Hey, thanks for playing along, and I know these are probably hard times for you. Okay, this uh, last story is from It's Winter Productions, and their animal story is, A few years ago, my wife and I were looking for a spot to get married on Hurricane Ridge, a mountain in the state of Washington. We encountered two male deer battling it out to impress the females. We got to watch their display from a couple of yards away, and it was one of the most magical wildlife experiences either of us have had. Can you imagine being within a few yards of uh, two bucks going at it? That has to be something. So uh, thanks everyone for playing along. Thank you for your stories. Um, I'm tempted to read some of these other stories because uh, some of them are just really good. In fact, let's just do that. Let's just get all these stories out there. Here's a story from uh, Kathy Moreland. My story is this. Growing up, I liked an opportunity to ride horses. Every year, my family went to Bear Lake so Dad could fish. Mom and I would go horseback riding. One time, we got two real winners. Mom got a big black horse that looked for any low-hanging branch to knock Mother off his back. I had a red pony who continuously looked back toward the barn. Mom finally got tired of getting hit by tree limbs and said, let's go back. Before I could get a good grip on the reins, my pony did a 180 and started to run back to the barn. I lost the reins and held on to his mane. At one point, he tripped and catapulted it forward over his head. For one moment, it looked like I would go completely over and off, but instead I went back onto the saddle with a teeth-jarring thud. Didn't scare me too bad because I continued to ride when I could, but it was a memory that my mom and I would laugh about. That's a good one. Thanks, Kathy. All right, next up is a story from Umbra Borealis. I really like this one. So apparently, uh, they're from the Netherlands. My story is this. I'm from the Netherlands, and where I live, we don't have raccoons at all. But I did get to visit the U.S. one time for a year. While I was there, I saw everything from wild squirrels to turkeys and deer and lots of birds. I'd never seen in my life. I even stared a fox in the eyes as we got back from a trip to a museum around sunset. The fox was hidden amongst some bushes across the driveway, but the two little pinpricks of reflected light, which, we, which were barely visible, stared back at me intensely. He didn't do anything, but it still felt pretty special. A couple months into my stay, though, I was beginning to worry I wouldn't see a raccoon, which made me sad because they're my favorite. Boy, I was wrong. I went outside to sit on the porch one night, looking at the fireflies outside, making the leaves and the trees sparkle like Christmas trees in July. And as I nibbled on some crackers, I saw a big and fuzzy meandering animal around looking for food. Maybe I should know better than to feed a wild animal, but I could tell that the little fellow looked healthy, didn't behave oddly, and most of all, wasn't too scared of me. So before I knew it, there I was, finally eye to eye with a real raccoon, feeding him crackers, or rather tossing them to him, as we kept each other at a safe distance. I named him Graham for obvious reasons. I had to go back to my country before I had the chance to see him again. I hope he's okay still. Say hi to Graham for me if you and your raccoon buddy see him. Thanks, Umbra Borealis. That is an awesome story. I'm glad you got to see your raccoon. And uh, I'm glad you get to enjoy these guys. You can uh, live vicariously through me. So Debbie McGuckin wanted to share that uh, her favorite is Bruiser. And that's a raccoon who touches her foot every time he wants marshmallows. And also there's a Douglas squirrel who comes up to her leg to get a peanut. And her name is Whisper. So those are uh, cool animal stories, Debbie. Thank you. Last is a story from someone with the handle at Flamingos18. My story is more about my niece. When she was around eight years old, she was at my house and a small bird hit our window. The bird was very stunned and we tried to give it water. The bird would sit on her finger. 
She walked around and she showed our neighbors. The bird sat on her finger for 15 minutes and then it flew away. She was not sad because she knew the bird was okay. I loved watching her with the bird and how happy she was. Thanks, Flamingo. That's a good one. Um, I had a special moment like that too when I was a kid with a uh, cardinal that got hurt and I took it into the house and it stayed with me for a couple months till it was healed up and I let it go and I named it Chirpy and Chirpy would come back to me and even land on my shoulder from time to time. And I smell skunk real heavy right now. Thank you, Cruella. <laughs> so that's all the stories we have. And I'm going to say happy Eaton's Day to you guys. Thanks for playing along. Uh, there goes the dog. Perfect timing. <laughs> Bye.